pay no attention to the fact that I forgot to plug in my quiet keyboard uh, and did so at the very end of the song and <laughs> completely forgot that the noise was going to play on stream. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. We got an update for the game, and uh, I would say we're going to explore it, but due to complications, I did not set up our regular save, and we're going to be playing on the small save today. With small trains. <laughs> I wondered what I connected. <laughs> you connected your soul. But yeah, we got some new engines. Um, I bought some. Well, okay, I, I admittedly deleted the old ones. I just cheated these new ones in because they were around the same price. Um, we got the 460. We have over here the 2102. And all the way down at Whittier, the 440. Okay, where. Why'd I teleport into the void? How'd I teleport into the void? Apparently there's going to be a very strong blast of what makes the more northern lights do the thing. And I might be able to see them tonight. Ooh, that's exciting. I I have I don't remember the last time I actually saw the um <laughs> the northern lights. I'm not even sure I have. I feel like I did as a child, but my memories of my childhood are so messy that I just I don't recall. Four six zero looks like the older Bachman Spectrum high driver four six zero. I mean, it could be, could be the same prototype. What about Aurora Falls? That doesn't count as real life. <laughs> That's a video game. Hello, Mudge. Hello, Max. Mudge, get in here, you coward. Like the game router, I just wish I had a better computer to play it on that can handle the graphics. Like, I mean, I have an RTX 4070 and DDR5 RAM. I, I went all in on this computer, man. <laughs> I should play it. You know, I should try and play Railroader on my 4 gigabyte laptop someday. I have a small laptop that I occasionally use for work. <laughs> I should just pull that out and try playing Rarator on it and see how terrible it runs. I get like 3 FPS. I 
having issues finding the server. I think it got to change download regions. Ah, oof. Should be U.S. Seattle. It's usually where I am. I got that engine myself this morning. Only a few loans to cover. Oh, don't worry. Me too, man. <laughs> oh, hold on. I forgot. We did have to cheat in the Santa Fe to replace the Berkshire. Like, do you really think that I would have taken the Santa Fe all the way up here <laughs> overnight? And, and then sell the Berkshire at the same time? So I, I set myself to company or sandbox mode to delete the old engines and get the new ones in place. Oh wait, what am I doing? No, 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 no. I don't want it to uncouple there. I want... to uncouple here. This is an eBay bit I've been watching and I just noticed it ends at 4.40 p.m. Just go over a time zone, TK. It'll be... <laughs> screw up the... Screw up the beauty. Screw up the, um... The coincidence. <laughs> Fly over one time zone. Go to Hawaii. <laughs> I was curious why I was already here. Yeah, it's just because we had the Berkshire, and I'm like, you know what? Well, let's just uh, let's just cheat a little bit, cause why not? It's not that much more expensive. Okay, it's four thousand dollars more expensive, but still, <laughs> we did get ourselves a decent downgrade with the American versus the Mogul, though, or not the American. Sorry, the Ten Wheeler versus the Mogul. Hello, Sax. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. I joined the stream at 2.10.0. Oh, Not quite 2.10.2, though. Not like the cool new big engine. <laughs> Why would I do that when I could go to Idaho in less than an hour of driving and have the same effect? Because it would be funnier to go to Hawaii. And also, you could see the 062Ts. Is it mirror to the game get a graphical update as well? It did get a graphical update. For instance, these um, telegraph telephone poles, those weren't there before. There have been some mild updates to that sort of stuff. Where's the cat cam? Durian is unfortunately temporarily banned from my room. Actually, probably at this rate permanently, because uh, she keeps sneaking in. <laughs> when my dad my dad comes in here and he delivers dinner to me, because I usually like eating it in my room anyways. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Every time he opens the door, she sneaks in. And we have to chase her out, and it's very annoying. Also added contrast and exposure sliders into the game, which are fantastic. I did notice that. I didn't mess with it yet, though. I should, maybe. You know what? We got nothing better to do on stream. <laughs> this is how we're going to play from here on out, boys. 
<laughs> oh god, please tell me there's a way I can reset this. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> now set it all the way to the bottom. You know what? Bet. Bet. Uh... Okay, that's not as bad, though. <laughs> I actually started playing Rarid again recently and bought some new log cars and up-tiered some of my contracts. Still gonna need a lot of money for the C46, though. C46 is worth it. <laughs> I like the D better personally, but <laughs> wait, no, wait, that's an out of context stir quote. <laughs> I wasn't thinking straight. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the new Rarids Online update? Um, looks cool, I guess. I haven't really watched the update video. I mean, I watched it, but I sort of like skimmed through it. Rotary Snowplow is a bit of a strange addition to the game, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> That's going to be hilarious seeing people um, trying their best to use that as an actual locomotive, only to realize, no, no, it's just a snowplow. Is it me, or is the game quiet? It might just be my audio settings. <clears throat> the only setting in which that quote actually makes sense is the discussion of which version of the Enterprise from Star Trek is best. <laughs> Sir Topham had also wanted an Atlantic and got a Pacific, which was better, and he still could- <laughs> I I have been seeing that video in my YouTube recommended a lot recently, or like the, the meme. I wanted an Atlantic, and that son of a bitch sent me that thing! <laughs> it's so cursed. It's so beautiful. I love it. Alright, orders, forward... Hello, Portlet of Astoria. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Do you like the new engines in Railroader? Yeah, they're pretty nice. I do feel like there's a bit of an oversaturation of small locomotives, but I am somebody who... <laughs> 
who is looking forward to the idea of a challenge save where we're only allowed to buy engines up to the uh, the K35. The K35 is the biggest engine we can get, and even then I might ban the K35. And so we have to go with all these small engines. And like, if you ever get a train that's going up the uh, the grade to a Larka Junction, and it's just a little too heavy, sucks to suck. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a fun save to do. MU is your friend. Oh no, I was pl I was planning on banning MUs. I think that it would be even funnier that way. Where you have to manually operate your engines separately. <laughs> Oh, six O only run when. <laughs> uh, let's see here. O six O. I mean, the O six O isn't all that bad, really. It's got a great FOA. It's got a good amount of water. We'll we'll just do a playthrough where I'm only allowed to buy one engine ever. I have to sell off the original engines immediately. One logo shorelines are neat, though they are neat. They are neat. <clears throat> they also kind of suck for multiplayer. <laughs> uh, that's that's my only concern about a single logo playthrough. I'm sorry, but was that a two ten two on the thumbnail? Yes, it was. I'm not going to be driving it today, probably, but we will be seeing it in a little bit. We have one on the save. Oh, I forgot to change the whistle on this sucker. Oops. <laughs> We already have that somewhere. That's just comical. Nah, that feels a little too big. Uh, that feels a little too shrill. That could be a fun one. That could also be a good one. Let's go with that one. That one sounds good. That one sounds good. Hello, Hillbilly. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. You see my comment about the Santa Fe? Uh, you were the one who did the red marble one, right? The red marble comment? About like 730 tons, something like that. We need a playthrough, and the only thing you can buy is the logging 282Ts. <laughs> Red Marble Grade would be such a nightmare in the funniest way possible. <laughs> Hello, Astral. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. I'm gonna overshoot. Oops. Alright, it's fine. 
<laughs> Central Pacific 410 El Gobernador and Railroader when Sir Topham Hat has also bought a 440K2 and thought he wouldn't get bullied because he's so old. <laughs> Sir Topham Hat is secretly just an uh, uh, eldritch abomination that cannot age. Got the Santa Fe to climb red marble with 906 tons. How fast was it going? You know, I remember you mentioned that earlier today. <clears throat> was she was she moving like a cow stuck in molasses, super glued to the floor? Does number four have a name? Yep, I have named all the engines, all the new engines. This one's Eagle because it's American. <laughs> <laughs> More like an eldritch abomination that spawns clones, since all his kids end up looking like him. <laughs> uh, the ultimate conspiracy is that Sir Topham Hat. It, every single Sir Topham Hat is just a clone of one one Greek like god that somehow figured out how to how to keep their lineage alive by cloning themselves seven million times. Oh, are we out of coal? Oh. Um. I, I don't think that's going to be a problem, but it might. <laughs> there's, there's only one way to find out. Let's roll. How the hell is that water? <laughs> uh, I noticed that TK and I was just gonna let it slide because I didn't want to reposition the engine. <laughs> if it works, it works. Don't ask questions, let the water phase through the steel. Wait, there's no coal down there? Yeah, there's no coal down there because I think we only have one coal hopper. And I'm pretty certain that Coal Hopper is either aboard your train, or it's in Bryson. And it's not in Bryson, so it's probably aboard your train. Uh, that is not the right track. <laughs> Hello, Cable. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. The Sir Topham Hat bloodline is a different species from the regular human. It's a species that consists of only males, and they reproduce through mitosis. That's why Topham Hat appears to not age. I don't know why I'm going for the nature documentary style of voice, but here we are. I mean, I have plenty of coal. Apparently the wrong coal for some reason, but plenty of it. <laughs> also, yeah, they really did reduce water consumption, didn't they? Jeez Louise. I just realized how little we're running through today. And here, we see the rare YouTuber covering the new engines in a social stream. The social nature is its hunting grounds, as it attempts to find likes and subscriptions. <laughs> okay, I can't keep a straight face while doing that. <laughs> Loving the new 10-wheeler. I've been... I know we're driving the 440 today, but I honestly think the 10-wheeler is my favorite of the three so far. We'll be seeing it in a minute.
It's my fave for sure. I, something about it is just cute with the centered headlight and the slightly small boiler. I like it. Oh, I really hope we get an update in the future. Oh, right, hold on. You have reminded me. I need to mess around with this. That doesn't work. Never mind. <laughs> I was hoping it would. It didn't. Dang. Do size 70 Ashland BR Pacific and it should look good. All right, let's try that. Let's try that. Eh, it's not so bad. We can probably make it bigger. Oh, uh, no, no, we can't. <laughs> Oh, uh, that didn't work out at all. I love this. See, yeah, S70 is about the, the biggest we're going to be able to manage. <laughs> Might need some spaces in there. We could probably get away with some spaces to make it look bigger. Also, you know, let's also make it... um. Bold and italic. Just cuz. <laughs> Show you the power of flex tape. I sawed this text in half. Four four zero, I think, was built for express pat train, so you can maybe give it the beans. I'm trying. We've got a pretty light load today, so we can probably get away with an express freight. But we are gonna have to worry about once we get to Ela, cause the passenger train is on the main line and it's blocking the main line. So uh, we're we're gonna have to worry about that. <laughs> Do you like dinosaurs? Hmm. Do I like dinosaurs? I haven't really thought about a question like that in a long time. I, <laughs> I haven't thought about dinosaurs since, like, fifth grade. At least not heavily, you know? They're kinda neat, but I'm kind of the, the sort of person who just knows, like, they exist, basically. To show you the power of flex tape, I sawed this boiler and bang! Kaboom! Oh, they exist dead. I mean, that's that's a, a quitter's mentality.
Oh man, I should have been getting more screenshots while we were going past. <laughs> Chickens are just free range dinosaurs we can consume. <laughs> Saw a video of a controlled boiler explosion in a bullet resistant cage. It, uh, it broke through the glass. Yeah. <laughs> Because a boiler explosion is very much not a bullet. <laughs> Same, I forgot to take photos. Rip. Ah, oh, well, well, we'll worry about that later. Did somebody say screenshots? <laughs> oh, hello, Nina. How's it going? Didn't see you there. <laughs> Very excited to play this new update, but I haven't yet since my computer was stepped on while on a scheming skiing trip. Aww. Sorry to hear that, man. That sucks. Oh, I forgot to update the text mod so the tenders on the new engines are blacked <laughs> Just showing up as a as a void on the tender. Lamau. You know we can afford to catch up to uh to number one. She's far enough ahead of us. We can continue the express freight to Bryson. Remember, into Bryson from east, you can hit around 45 safely. Yep, yep. I'm highballing. We are speed. God, this is satisfying. Whistle Canyon, baby. Why does 40 and Raritors feel and look slower than 30 and Freyars in line? Probably because the choo choos are smaller, as um, Celestials mentioned. <laughs> that is, that's a little faster than 45 miles an hour. <laughs> Got a little spooked by the wheel squealing there. And we have already damaged the train because we were going too fast. Hooray. But we didn't derail. We didn't derail. It's fine. <laughs> Where's the last crossing for this route? Oh, we're closing in on it.
just I'm going to sell myself over into yard track number two. Wait. Uh, yeah, this track. Bam. <laughs> there we go. My model for coming around curves fast is if the train starts to shake, apply the brake. <laughs> Loading a bird right now. I'm excited for this 440. It's a pretty little engine. It's not the strongest thing in the world, but what do you expect? It's a 4-4-0. Some wonderful news. Right as I was about to have a crying breakdown, a package arrived. The package turned out to be a very late Valentine's gift. Bro, it's been over a month since Valentine's Day. It's a PS5. Ayo. Lucky. Don't mind me running around, Nina. <laughs> like a maniac. <laughs> Try to get the perfect screenshots. <laughs> How'd you get the fancy letter tender lettering? Is it a mod? No, it's not a mod. This is something you can do in the vanilla game. Um so, you go into the customize tab, you go into the lettering thing, and you can add some basic text formatting. So this right here is start italics, this is start bold, and this is set the size of the text. Then you type out what text you want, and then BR right here stands for break, and a break is basically just an indent. So, uh, we, we just use straight up things you can do in normal Unity. Okay, hold on. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, we can't have our steam engines running away on us. You, you need some water, my friend. <laughs> Probably some coal, too. Herder is the only game that makes me want to turn down the mouse sensitivity. I haven't messed with the mouse sensitivity yet. Which is, I say that, but I've been playing this game for how long? <laughs> how many months now? And before the Pacific suffers from a skill issue. I think the Pacific is actually going to remain on the railroad forever. Like, I know it's small. I know this engine is the third weakest locomotive in the game. And it doesn't really have anything much going for it other than maybe it's coal capacity. Can rotate the cameras with Q and E. Oh, so you can, and it's a lot slower. Did you look at that? Okay, what what's going on with that number on the side of the cab? You guys are seeing it disappearing, right? What the heck? 
<laughs> a skill issue of oh okay mean right <laughs> a perishing and a crown sheet failure I see, I see. Oh damn, wait, this thing is full up. Hot diggity. Wonder how long before they had a USPS contract. That will be nice. An actual use for this thing. There's also apparently a second passenger car that is uh, something you have to unlock only in Sandbox. Um, or, or you're only capable of unlocking in Sandbox, which is the, the work passenger car. I, I think people have mentioned it before, but I, that only really got solidified in my head, like, yesterday. Worksman car is pretty neat to put in a mixed freight consist. That it is, aside from the fact that it only holds ten passenger cars. <laughs> Or t not ten passenger cars, ten passengers. Why'd I say cars? <laughs> Maybe that'll be for milestones? That would be cool. That'd be an interesting way of doing milestones. Like it's a, Maybe it gives like a, a bonus to how fast the milestones are completed or something. Like normally they take two days, but if you bring a worksman coach, it takes one. That'd be nifty. I literally played for an hour before realizing new toys were available yesterday. <laughs> That's hilarious. But it's also not too surprising, you know, because, like, who checks the locomotive menu after an update? Aside from people who have checked the patch notes and know there's locomotives. Decided to restart my game of Rare Order with the new update and had it on my mind for a while and decided to do it. Gone with the Murphy Branch Rare Order reporting mark MBR for the Hickory Mountain Lines reporting March HML. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm also thinking of restarting and doing a save with some of the new locomotives and, and the smaller scope. Because one thing I've noticed about the big save that we normally do on these Sunday sessions is, uh, it's big. <laughs> I, I know that seems kind of obvious, but, like, it l these last three weeks, we have been playing one in-game day <laughs> of the Railroad. And so I'm thinking that a, sh a shorter Railroad, like from Whittier to Alarca, with a smaller selection of engines might not be a bad choice.
Rarer's alone player check. We check for locomotives. <laughs> every update, you always go into the buy menu and try and find every Easter egg they've added. Does start a new save of my own for when I don't want to manage the chaos of my big single player game? Exactly, exactly. Hell, the the size of this safe might not be all that bad, honestly, just from Whittier to Alarka Junction. Eh, eh, no, no, we, we want to go from Whittier to Alarka, don't we? I'd probably be the better option. Alright, topped off. This is about the perfect size, just need to add a lark. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I've told you guys about the idea to, to do that little mini-series with, like, tutorials on how to play the game, and just my experience, my, my advice and experience of after having played for 350 hours. My first save is everything unlocked and I'm drowning in workload. Dude, same. <laughs> That's actually the reason that I started this save initially is because I wanted a single-player save where we didn't have as much to do. And, um... Well, it's working. Another nice side effect of this is that we, we now actually have everybody in a confined space. Like, Mudge and, and Nina are over here in Whittier, and we got to pass Mudge and Hila, and we got to meet... Um, Nina in Bryson, and catch up to the passenger train, which we are currently messing with, in order to make sure that it's set up and ready for the run forwards. My new save is actually Whittier to Alarka, that's it, within an interchange on either side. Exactly! Like, it's the perfect... Honestly, I think Whittier to Alarka is the perfect size for people... for, for a small group. For large groups, I think the whole route is pretty decent, or like adding on the Silva extension or the red marble grade, but like, we only have three people who are playing today. <laughs> Why do we want to go across the red marble, man, you know? Going for Silva and Bryson and avoiding going past Bryson for this road. That's not too bad of an idea. Love them to add a starting option to run from Andrews to Bryson. That would be pretty cool, but it would also be a little bit weird. They'd probably have to redo a lot of the map to get the goals uh, to work properly with the inversion. And you'd also, if it was from Andrews, you know, you'd only have the one industry to start with. You'd only have Snowbird. <laughs> Andrew to Bryson would be boring right now. Andrew to Bryson wouldn't be as boring because they added the stuff in Wesser and Antahala and Hewitt. So it'd be a lot more in interesting than before. It wouldn't be as exciting as the Whittier to Bryson and, and out to Silva route, so. I'm barely able to keep up with the run from Silva to Alarka Junction, probably because I only have, only have four engines, so Alarka's gonna be my last expansion. That is entirely fair. Even with more than four engines, it can take a long time to do Silva to Alarka Junction, or to Alarka even. Because that's, that's around half of what the whole, the line is. So...
I've thought about getting Veritor, but I really don't know if I'd have fun with it for long. I need to be in a certain mood to drive a train for hours, and my mood is relatively rare. I could try becoming a streamer, though. Having a little company probably helps a lot, lol. You could also try and, and like, just get a group together and do, like, sessions every Sunday, say. <laughs> no, but you can do, like, weekly sessions with a group of people where y'all just band together and vibe and run trains. Because then it's running trains and doing something that you, you know how to do well, but mixed in with, with socialization and hanging out with people. What cookie do you like more, Oreo or Triton? Uh, I don't know what Tritons are. <laughs> Playing with others is great fun. Seeing other trains bolting around is awesome. I know, right? <laughs> And there's another reason. I mean, I mean, I know I mentioned this reason earlier, but I yet another reason to do the smaller save. <laughs> Maybe at a Dillsborough start. A Dillsborough start could be interesting. What would that be? Like your line is literally just Dillsborough to Silva, back and forth. Then your first expansion is like all the way out to Whittier and e maybe Elo. It'd be a very big expansion though. And then we just continue from there. I personally like the Whittier start though. I think it, I think that's a really good starting point, especially for new players. Nantahala Power and Light Company, Union Lumber Company, and one other company in Nantahala is going to be interesting to work, to say the least. It's going to be very strange, because the lumber and power companies being on that little, that <laughs> tiny switching yard off of the main... <laughs> New 2102 is nice. Yeah, it's a pretty good little loco. I haven't run it yet. Um, I think Nina's currently operating it, and it's at the other end of the line. Right, I forgot. I completely forgot that we have the um. <laughs> we have the extra coal cars to deliver, don't we? My new road engine and replace the 210. Oh, it's such a such a chonky little boy. <laughs> One thing I will say I like about Railroader is that overpowered engines don't always really feel overpowered. The pricing is decently higher than the other locomotives in the game. Once you get to the, those later locomotives. And all things considered. If you're running, the amount of cars you run is not de determined solely by the player, it's determined by what contracts you pick up. So it doesn't quite have the same issues that, and complaints that I had with Railroads Online and, and how you would get like a massive chonky locomotive and just run the longest train known to man. Alright, thonk. Thank you. 
Overpowered engines are a huge strain on your resources if you use them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Speaking of resources, we are in debt, and uh, I... Why is it... Oh, I see. Please quit and reload this save. Thank you, game. <laughs> Very cool. It didn't work earlier when I tried to change it back. Yeah, whatever. That won't kill us. We do have a pretty big loan, though. It's like $50,000, $55,000, somewhere in that range. Fifty K mines at eighty K after that purchase. Yeah, I'm trying on this save to be a little conservative with my cash and not go out of my way and waste all my money on big engines and and stuff. But that's also because we don't have as much of a route, so we don't need to spend like ninety grand on an engine. We did. We got the Burke, but <laughs> Hello, Norfolk Southern Artist. I would like to order one intact hazmat tanker. Just realized I have the ability to take out one thousand or one hundred and fifty thousand in loans right now. <laughs> You're gonna be paying that off for like seventeen years, man. We we got loans on like the third day of playing Rarider, or the the fifth day of playing Rarider, and we have not been able to repay them ever. <laughs> hey, welcome back, T14. Welcome back. You have loans to pay. I got only two this from this morning. Yeah, no, we we uh we have about fifty thousand on this current save, and on the other save we had what was it two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. 
make five ish K a day from the sawmill alone. Uh, I don't do the sawmill, honestly. It, it's not really that fun for me right now. I might do it on this save, though, where there's less, I mean, <laughs> less stuff to do. Get it up to tier five. Tier 5 sawmills enjoyable, so many cars a day. Sawmill always feels like busy work. Exactly, that's why I wouldn't complain about the sawmill. <clears throat> I'm sure it would be a lot more fun though if like, you had the logs coming from Walker and from Connolly. Walker I enjoy, honestly. Exactly. Like, Connolly just gets boring after some time. Walker, though... Walker seems a little more exhilarating, a little more exciting. <laughs> Get the logging tank mics. Logging tank mics are perfect for walkers since it has a tower up there, so it does, so it does. They still run out of water, like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> Though admittedly, now that they've reduced the fuel consumptions, it's probably going to be a lot easier to get away with um, running up that route. I wonder how they handle now. Exactly, they probably handle a lot better than they used to. Tank packs when... Wait, why is there a fusee hither? I'm <laughs> blocking Terrence from going anywhere. I gonna lie, my favorite industry to run is Robinson Coal. Robinson is really nice. Because it's a good mainline run if you're going from Whittier, and an even better one if you're going from Silva. So you have a nice long mainline run of just coal cars to reach this destination where the switching job is actually pretty straightforward and easy and it makes you a lot of money and it looks cool in the process I like Robinson I like Meet the Robinsons good movie, actually I don't remember if it's a good movie, it's been way too long, I haven't watched it in like a year or not a year, like ten years <laughs> I used to have one of those really silly uh, hair brushes that they made off of that movie, where if you pressed a button, it would make this little beeping noise. <laughs> Great movie, in my opinion. Me and my wife's first movie. Hey, that's sweet. That's cool. All I really remember about it is just how cheesy that they defeated the villain. Well, okay, I remember a lot about the movie, but the one thing that stuck with me and has annoyed me for years is just how they defeated the hat by saying, I'm not gonna invent you. Yeah, sure, that's how time travel works. 
It did make for... <laughs> it made for some funny memes down the line, at least. It was very cheesy, exactly. Extremely cheesy. But it was fun. And I think it had a good message. It had a train somewhere in there. I know they had a train. Oh, question. Chat. So, I know that uh, link and pin couplings you generally want to have the stronger engine in the back of the of a double header because otherwise you might break the pins but on a on couplers on standard couplers is it still good practice to or sorry, on knuckle couplers, my bad. Uh, on knuckle couplers, is it still good practice to um, put the stronger engine in the back, or is it fine to put it on the front? What do y'all think? What, what do y'all know? Because I don't know. <laughs> I'm not smart on this subject. Always want the stronger engine in the back. You don't want to pull your train through the frames of your weaker loco, but that would be funny. <laughs> I think with couplers, you want the rear engine to be the strongest because the smaller loco has a weaker frame. Also, it does visually look nicer. That is true. That is true. I'm just trying to figure out how lazy I can be. Knuckle couplers put stronger in front, and that's what they did with 4014 and 844. Well, that might have just been a publicity sort of thing. Put the put the big engine in the front of the train, you know. Speaking of movies bugging me, we watched Inside Out a while ago in class, and I was the first one to point out that sadness f up at the start was what caused all the events of the movie and Bing Pong's death. <laughs> I haven't actually watched Inside Out, so I don't know much of anything other than Bing Bong dies. <laughs> Spoiler alert, boys. Bing Bong perishes in a dumpster fire. <laughs> Love that movie too. I just like kid movies still, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, fair. Fair. Honestly, what was the last movie I watched? I think it probably was Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. I have I don't really watch movies all that often these days. But, because we watched that after watching Everything Everywhere all at once.
Oh, it was so good. Yeah, it was so good, dude. I convinced my father to come out and watch it with me. It wasn't really something he would have normally watched, but he liked it. Last Wish is a fantastic film. Loved seeing that movie in theaters. Unfortunately, I got spoiled for most of it before watching it, but dude, it was still so good. <laughs> Love the Iron Giant because everyone watches it and completely misses the point. It just sees the robot as a cool super weapon. Cough, cough, Ready Player One, the movie, and that big fight action scene where they use him as like a, as a super weapon. <laughs> And like every other media he's portrayed in, aside from the Iron Giant. Depends on the locomotive in question, as I heard that the EMD BL2 diesel had a pretty weak frame so for it, so it is possible to pull it apart. So limit on a number of locomotives and where said locomotives are at, with one in front and one on the back of a BL2. That's kind of an interesting restriction. <laughs> Typical BL2L. It's got it in the name BL2. <laughs> I always forget how efficient running trains manually is over AI. <laughs> like for coal and water, or just for number of moves it takes to actually do things? so many people media illiterate. I mean, people think Heath Ledger's Joker is cool and a good guy, or that Patrick Bateman is a chill and good dude who you want to be. No. I, dude, it's not just media illiteracy, it's the world as a whole. <laughs> Don't just point to people not watching movies or, or reading books properly and understanding their meaning. Point to the fact that people are idiots. Noid the AI can get 1% differences on reverser, while we can't do less than 10%? Wait, is there a way to actually, like, tell the number of percentage you're at? Anyone here gonna go see Godzilla X Con, the new empire in theaters? I haven't been to a theater since The Last Witch. It's been years. Maybe I should go out and see something like that soon. Do a movie night with my sister and father. Vibe and hang out. Can look at the reverser if you're in the cab. Aha! I see! It's a thing that I don't check very often. <laughs> ah, yeah, you can only do it in 10%. People are stupid. You want proof? Give them cars and put them on a highway! Is it bad that one of my, um... <laughs> one of my guilty pleasures is watching car crash compilations? Last time I went to a theater was when I went to see Strays with my cousin. There were only 10 people there. Yeah, even at Puss in Boots, there was like probably 20 people total. And when we watched Everything Everywhere all at once, there was probably like 10. And Everything Everywhere is like an amazing movie, dude. Top notch. 
beautiful film. There was only ten people, and I, I think it was like running at a, a second run theater or whatever, but still. Last theater I went to was to see Godzilla Minus One on the 15th of, of December 2023. There was anywhere from 70 to 110 people there. That's a lot of people. <laughs> then again, I, I never watch movies on opening weekends, so that might be part of it. God, look at him go. Watched the Lego movie on opening weekend, and holy heck, that theater was packed. At least 100 people there. Hot diggity. Still have yet to watch Godzilla Minus One. Really want to, though. I've managed to have zero spoilers for it, too, and I'm going to keep it that way. That's impressive. I find that whenever I'm a part of a fandom and I want to try and keep myself spoiler free, I fail within like two days. <laughs> Pain. It sucks. Started to save, so I'm on day one. Both locomotives in the ship. Uh, do you mean the shed? Maybe I shouldn't go 50 up this hill, you say, reaching the 30 mile an hour corner.
Uh, you know what, actually? You know what? Let's operate this train in first person view. This is just a passenger train. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I guess the worst that could happen is that I accidentally, um... I'm gonna keep this menu open just in case. <laughs> it could accidentally have the, um... The train go too fast. Bane of movie fan lives, leakers, especially Godzilla X Con, which had its entire plot leaked for half a day. Marketing for that film ain't helping either, I can't help but feel like I've already watched the whole movie already and it hasn't even been released yet. <laughs> they gotta sell it somehow, and they sell it by spoiling the whole movie, spoiling the big twists and making you watch because you think that there has to be more, right? Right? Oh, right, hold on. I'm, I'm not supposed to be running in third person. Oh, there's the reverser. Hello, K Kid. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I think they're fun. I think they're cool. We're currently running an old locomotive, though. We're running the P P18 Pacific. We have, though, we have all the new engines on this save. We were running the 440 like just five minutes ago. Control zero puts you in the driver's seat of the train. He's like, oh, don't worry, I'm aware, I'm aware. That's what I'm currently doing. It's the range of coupling speeds in this game. Uh, you generally want to keep it below five miles an hour. Or else you'll, um, you'll hit too hard. Above five, you're screwed. Exactly. <laughs> Above five, and you, you take like 79% damage, derail your train, set your house on fire, and happen to have your rival um, destroy everything and everyone you ever knew and loved. I'll still... 
just because the whistle is so high up, uh, I'm I'm still gonna use V to uh, to blow it. Are you playing online? If so, can I join? Uh, I am playing with tier three channel members and tier two Ko-Fi supporters. So what we do every week on Sundays. Coupled above five, I got doxxed and raided by the FBI for my crimes against humanity. <laughs> I don't enjoy multiplayer, I've been playing all these recent train games solo. Personally, I like it a good amount because it means that there's more conflicts and more trains and more stuff for you to worry about. Because you actually have to communicate and, and work together. And you get more work done. And more work means more trains. I don't know, I don't think I'm vocalizing my thoughts very well because I'm trying to focus on driving this train first person. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and double check the passenger cars. Is there anything left for us to load? There are eight passengers to Whittier. And the train doesn't want to move, so I'm going or load, so I'm gonna cheat the system. <laughs> system has been cheated. Okay, back aboard. More people, more money, more fun. Exactly, exactly, Mudge. Perfect timing on that departure. Hey, you're using the Y as we speak. Aha, you are! I think it would be neat in the future if we could electrify parts of our line. Ah yes, let's go ahead and let's get that inner urban idea floating around again. <laughs> Don't think the Southern did anything like that IRL, but the Milwaukee Toad did. Too steep? Get an electric. Too many tunnels? Get an electric.
I'm just waiting for the station building to... <laughs> to come into view. I'm curious to see if someday when tools are released, if players will make their own maps. They probably will. I mean, look at me. I, I spent the time building, um... Building custom maps for railroads online. It'd only be a matter of time till I started building custom maps for um for Railroader. <laughs> Isle of Sodor when Oh, we might have to pull this thing forward a little bit. Never mind, we don't need to pull anything forward. At time, the Pensy built an electric load to go for grades so strong it ripped cars in half? Excuse me? <laughs> what locomotive was this? Players have already built custom yards and loops for this game. Yeah, yeah, so... If they're willing to do that... If the tools are already available to mod in your own tracks... Maybe I need to look into it. <laughs> Luna Ridge version 3. The FF1 or as she was known by train crews. Big oh, I've heard of Big Liz. Built in 1917, stronger than a big boy. God. That poor little 40 foot box car that had to have been absolutely flipping decimated. <laughs> imagine someday we get a fully modernized map someone makes with high speed freight and rail or high speed and freight rail yeah let's let's go ahead and build the entirety of central tokyo <laughs> return to rail route for like one day build the entirety of tokyo with a, an accurate timetable. <laughs> Why not map the entire East Coast Rail Network, right? All of it from top to bottom, and you can buy and build literally any part. You are Conrail. <laughs> God, that reminds me, since we were talking about Godzilla, somebody, uh... <laughs> somebody has this image of Godzilla holding a Shinkansen, and it just says, got Shinkansen. I don't know why, it's a very funny little image to me, but... It's cute, I like it.
Ayo, money. God, we're gonna be re able to repay so many loans. It's gonna be so good. Railroad is Southern 2102 plus 280. What? Southern made that a thing? <laughs> what cursed abomination is that? made the tender a Connie oh my goodness so it's kind of like the 28884 good lord <laughs> I started that way too early for the crossing. Have you done any fooling around with the new 2102 yet? Oh, we have one on the save, actually. She's up at uh, Alarka Junction right now. Number three is our 2102. I mostly run the 440 today, though I guess once we start the next in-game day, I'm going to ask to swap engines with one of the people here, one of the folks. Because that way we can get a little taste of what it's like to drive the 460 or the 2102. How much water are we at, by the way? Oh, well, yeah, we're doing fine. We're doing fine.
Happy to swap out when we restart the server. I may take the time to rebuild one of my mods real quick. You know, that's fair. That's fair. Then I can do the Robinson Gap coal hauls. We can do speed. We can have the strongest engine in the game. <laughs> Yes, open the passenger window. See that we have 43 passengers for Alarka Junction. Yippee. Or in the stream, you asked about using a laptop for order. Uh, I was talking specifically about one of my own laptops. It's a laptop with only four gigabytes of RAM. That's a refurbish from like seven years ago. It's a terrible little computer, but it's it's good for work, you know. It's good for work. Oh, I, I was supposed to do that over here. Alright, full forward. Full throttle. Bell on. Pull back on the reverser gradually. Because if we can fly at 45 miles an hour... Currently playing some local shoreline operations, and remember why I hated the track building system. <laughs> that game is a fun little game to play, but it's always a little bit of a struggle. Hey, at least it has the 262 T's. We can make we can maybe model Snickerdoodle. Open TTD is pretty fun. Open TTD is great. Honestly, one thing I've considered doing was having a paid supporter Open TTD server for a while. It's been a while since I thought about doing that, though. That was back in like July. Oh man, we're we're really eyeballing it now. Look at us fly. <laughs> Should do a community server. I've been relearning the game again. My only complaint is that I I might want to do the JGR patch, which has some some really excellent features that make the game fun. And of course, I want to use some mods for the game, but then again, didn't they add like a, a time rate to the game now? That was one of the things I disliked about the base game, and why I got the patch was that there was no way to control how long a day was. I just forgot to blow for a crossing.
You know, running this in first person actually ain't so bad. It's kind of fun. I like it. You've gained an engineer. <laughs> Hello, friend. How's it going? <laughs> we got somebody to actually operate the firebox. Finally. Also, I just realized I left the bell on after the railroad crossings. The door isn't open on this firebox, sad days. Man! If only. I don't know, doesn't, isn't it able to do that on like a couple of locomotives? Like obviously it doesn't do anything, but it looks cool. Oi, oi, Grog. Look, Grog, me jealous of Grog making wheel. So me installed tur turbocharger on fire. Wait, flunch, see turbocharger on fire. <laughs> So we've gone straight from the mobster to the, um, whatever this is, the paleontology lickle times. I can words. Uh, we parked at a decent position, right? Oh yeah, absolutely, we're good. <laughs> Tony, Tony, look, look at me, Tony. I'm the one who puts her in Bryson on time. God, raspy voice killing me. I can't do it. <laughs> Anyone here played American Railroads by the developers of Railroads Online? I did once. It, uh... I kept getting confused and kind of just gave up. Hydration! Hydration good! Go get hydration, everybody. 
Go drink water, you cowards. Show yourself some self-care. <laughs> or else. I don't know why I'm so threatening on live streams about about self-care, but y you better do it. <laughs> Hail hydration. Don't have water, just sugar water. That's better than nothing. It, it's not the best, but it's better than nothing. Hello, Del Vostro. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. It's been pretty good so far. We've been running on. Um, we have the 440, 460, and 2102. Hilariously, we're not running any of them right now. We're running the P18 on a passenger service. Uh, first person view for the first time, I think, ever since I started this game. Okay, maybe not the first time, but I don't, I don't run the first person very often. <laughs> I avoid it like the plague. Have you noticed the rocks in the river now? Uh, nope. Are there rocks in the river? Oh. So there are. Oh, that's cool. It's pretty neat. Trying to not derail the Berkshire around the copper. Why are you running the Berkshire at the copper mines? <laughs> Excuse me? Why are you running something small? Like, I don't know, when. an SW1 or something? <laughs> what? Ah, yes, the Berkshire, the classic engine known best for its ability to climb steep mountain hills and, and go around sharp turns. I blew that whistle way too late. It's fine.
text on it before. All right, drop a save. Shut down server. Let's, I'm going to start this in single player just to double check and make sure that we can set it to company mode. Or it already is set to company mode, I should say. Okay, it's already set to company mode. We're good. We're golden! Hello, Robert. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. You have any idea how to make the turntable and loco work? I need it because the locomotive spawned facing the wrong way and I have no other way to turn it around. TK, just build a loop of track. Bada bing, bada boom. Not enough room for a balloon loop or a Y. You would be surprised, TK. <laughs> you would be surprised. Large copper is such an annoying industry to service. Why does it take this long to process one car of copper? Hello, Darknut. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Equipment, hello. Operations. Actually, want you to go to the East Whittier Calling Tower. Random saying of the day, if you have the money to buy five two ten twos, and you're no longer a short line railroad, either that or you're a miser. <laughs> there is no in-between. 
Customize refuel one thousand and one. Uh, wait, no, A P R R. Oh, wait, no, A P R R. Refuel, let's make the color a dark gray. Bam. Still don't have a mouse for my gaming laptop and it doesn't register right click on the trackpad, so I kind of just locked my logo's brakes on. Uh, dude, just just go get a mouse from like Best Buy or something. They're not Best Buy, like Fred Meyer's. Just buy a five dollar mouse. It's not that hard. You can do it. Is the P eighteen the other new locomotive today? Uh, the P eighteen we've had on this save for a while actually. Um, the four six zero replaced a G twenty five. Hello, Mr. 460. And I think what was the other one? The 440 is just a 440. And the 2102 is a brand spanking new engine. Did you buy a T22 and an A23? Yes, we bought all the new engines on this safe. Each and every one. Oh, it does remind me. I guess I've got some work to do. No Fred Meyer at Best Buy within 100 miles of our. 100 miles, hot diggity. No convenience store, you can just quickly stop by and say, hey, yo, I want a mouse, and they'll get you a mouse for like five bucks, really? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> Amazon is the answer. <laughs> it might be. It might be.
Mike, freight cars are F F four D O O orange, and passenger coaches are stock Pullman green. Generally, I like a kind of mineral red. What was it? It was dark Tuscan oxide red. That's the color I use IRL on my on my own thirty stuff. But for this save, since we only have coal hoppers, we're not even gonna try and get tankers. I'm just gonna keep with the black, because why not? <laughs> Hello, Jorz. Hello, Locke. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we've been messing around with a 440. We also have a 460 and a 2102, though other people have been running those today. We will be messing around with one of those engines uh, for the second half of the stream. Right now, we are running just light loco. We have the 440 and a caboose, and we are headed for East Whittier, where we are going to um, to park this locomotive next to the interchange, so that we can pick up an, a westbound train later. No, Vitaly Glynn, uh, Loco Edward Thomas. Imagine that valve gear, but a little beefier and on a 210 too. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't pay attention to valve gear on locomotives very often. I don't. I don't know Edward Thomas. <laughs> there are three computer stores in town, but only one. One only does repairs. One tried to scam a friend of mine, and the third is so swamped that most stock is sold before it even arrives. <laughs> oh, I, I'm glad they got good business, at least. I'll be getting a mouse soon, a hand-me-down from a friend who has six to eight spares, despite there only being two computers in his house. Dude, you don't understand. Do you constantly replace peripherals? It's just, it's part of owning a computer. <laughs> 440 is a pretty decent engine. I'm using it on the Alarca Bryson Whittier Passenger. Five open-end passenger cars. Oops. Um, I was paying too much attention to chat. And now, we, uh, we are at 82%. Hooray! I hope the guys at the shop at Whittier are uh, ready. ready for a little bit of extra work today. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever buy the 440. I don't have much of a use for it. I think I'm going to... I, I've been saying this on the stream a lot, and I've been saying it off stream too. I'm thinking of starting a brand new save. But then again, we've also got this save, so I might just use this one. The 440 is a nice, small engine that's able to handle... Uh, like, say, Whittier to Bryson, and maybe a small train up to Alarca. And it would be great for passenger service. So that's probably what I'm going to dedicate it to. Mice are social animals. They need friends. I almost derailed my Berkshire because I looked at the stream at the same time you almost derailed that Pacific. No, this isn't a Pacific. This is the 440, and we definitely derailed it.
I have ten locos already. You know, that is fair. That is reasonable. However, <laughs> that's why we're restarting. That's why I'm going for the smaller railroad. Well, it's just one of the reasons. The other reason is uh, when you have run from Andrews all the way to Silva, you barely interact with other players, and it gets a little boring because of that. <laughs> you constantly replace peripherals, Stir said, as I looked over at the mouse I've been using for four years after I pulled it out of the moth pit all bin. <laughs> All I can think of is uh, that one Hermitcraft thing that happened recently, Ethos setup, where he has his microphone sitting on top of like a... <laughs> where he's been using his keyboard for like 11 years and he has his microphone sitting on top of a Kleenex box. <laughs> Sorry to suddenly dip. No worries, Nina. No worries. Take care, man. We we can worry about the logging run. Oh, you've got it on AI already, so... No worries. Take care. G16, T17, S23, G25, K35, D46, SW1, B65. No, my bad, I have eight locos. Actually, I have a P43, so nine locos. That's a lot of train. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of like the idea of doing a railroad with only six locomotives, and most of them are pretty, like, you have two pairs of engines. So you have, say, two 440s, two 260s, and then, like, a 280, and a, um, a 282, maybe? I don't know why, but some some simplistic consistency actually sounds like a kind of fun way to handle a railroad. Because most of the time, I just let I, I just buy a whole bunch of different types of trains. So I just buy all the engines. <laughs> what about a six driver ch limit challenge save? That could be kind of interesting. But if anything, I was already considering doing a, um, a power rating limit of the K28. And so if I added that on top of it, then it would basically just be excluding the C25 and the K28. <laughs> it wouldn't really do much to the, the listing. Unless you mean it, it's only six drivers, so you can't even have, like, the, uh, the 440 or the 442... What if you had to make if you had to make a save with only one loco, which one would you pick? Personally, I would go with the big mogul. The big mogul is a pretty decent option, coming in at 5000 gallons of water, 11 tons of coal. But honestly, I would probably go for the uh, the A23 American. It's a little bit heavier weight and it's got less tractive effort. Um either the A23 or the S23. I think the A23, though, because it just has a little bit of extra water. And water is what I find I run through fastest. I 
I mean, you can have any Locust so long as it has less than eight driving wheels. I, I know what you meant, Radio, but the thing is, is I've already been considering my own challenge save. And so I'm thinking, like, eh, should I cross the, the two ideas together? Probably not. <laughs> Should really add an articulated loco sometime, maybe a small one like a 2660 and then a slightly larger 2666. I think articulated locomotives overall would be a little bit too big for the scope and scale of Railroader. I, uh, at least most articulated. It's not literally all of them, obviously. There's some that would work fine, but. I, I think a 2660 might push the limits. I know a 2666 definitely would. The only articulated that'd be good in this game is a Skookum. Yes, exactly. Skookum would be a great addition. <laughs> Also, there is the complication, though, again, they keep re I keep bringing this up, the complication of those engines just aren't really something that can be fit into the game at this point in time. So... I believe it was something again to do with how the they added wheels and drivers to locomotives, so they couldn't add articulated. I don't know. <laughs> Frankly, a two six 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 is a bad idea. Going off the Virginian AG Blue Ridge is this some disaster that I haven't heard about? <laughs> Did somebody perish? Thoughts on the RGS rotary plow being added to railroads in line with no context being added? It's big, it's shiny, people will be excited for it. Articulated, but what about duplexes? Duplexes might be possible. <laughs> that would be funny seeing a pen C S <laughs> wait, you said an S one, not a T one. <laughs> Uh, what next? Wait, got, actually, what is the biggest duplex that was ever made? Random question. Small driver articulated engines would be cool under like three foot wheels. I agree. I think that smaller driver three uh, engines would fit pretty well. I, I think smaller driver articulated would be perfect for a line like this. <laughs> but when people think of articulated, they usually think of the big chunky big boys and and whatnot.
To be fair, they originally tried to order a 212.6. What? <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, that would have that would have been a sight to behold. What do you think of the new ra way to retail cars? Or, or I assume you mean re-rail. I don't like that the knuckle couplers are a gameplay setting and not an option uh, no attachment in the buy menu. Wait, that... Really? That's how they're handling it? It's just a gameplay setting? That seems like such a wazy... 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 Lazy way... To handle such a cool feature. Man... That's so boring. The 2102 can handle like about 42,000 tons going over Government Island? Oh, the 2102. You, you mean the, um, the new engine. Yeah, we've, we've somebody mentioned that the 2102 is capable of handling almost a thousand pounds going up red marble all by itself, which is insane. Also awesome. <laughs> If I ever gain the knowledge on how to construct actual steam engines, I'm making Betsy as an, an 0880. Oh, Chris. <laughs> Chris Sod, I don't know if you're on the Discord or not, but, um. Have you seen the 0440T that I posted the other day in the Model Road chat? <laughs> Just build one of those. Jesus Christ, I thought that such a thing would only come from the deep, dark recesses of my puffy, pastry-filled brain. Don't worry, you're not the only one. In fact, you could probably make that into a, a triplex if you really wanted to. You could make it a four, an 04440.
Hey, now we can see how much loan we have. We have $48,000, boys and girls. And what? Also give it 50 inch drivers for maximum speed? Betsy 60 PSI boiler can barely power her two cylinders. 50 inches is small. We need at least 60. <laughs> well, it'd be really neat locomotive to see in Rarity would be a B&O C16 dock setter. Ooh, that'd be fun. Either with or without the tender. That'd be a neat little addition to the game. <laughs> Gonna overdose a poor rate ton on steroids and turn it into a standard gauge chew. Oh, don't worry, Robert. There's already a standard gauge O scale porter. Like, it's obviously, at least to me, it looks like the, the three foot gauge porter, but it has Lionel wheels. It's a. <laughs> I saw one on eBay recently. Porter made some medium-sized standard gauge locos. One I know of off the top of my head is the 060, the chunky 060 ST. I've seen those engines before. The, they mostly didn't make anything much bigger than like a 262. They made pretty small engines that were designed for smaller service stuff, but yeah, they made standard gauge stuff. Just did some Googling out of curiosity, and apparently not only do two L4 tank engines exist, but one is preserved and operational from Bulgaria of all places. That's cool. Porter also made a few 480s and 482s for Colombia, and at least one 484 for Brazil, I think. All narrow gauge. Chonky little, little things. I wonder how they did that, because from what I remember, most of the early porters were engines that were just designed for one person to operate. So seeing them building 484s is a, 
Certainly a mental image. <laughs> Hello, Ginger. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. It's going fine. We just bought some extra equipment here. Uh, we have a couple of... We got a bunch of freight cars filling the yard. We got somebody sitting down here waiting for us to start the new day. And uh, we are going to do an interchange service here in a second, probably. Most likely. 90% <laughs> certain. Four eight O's and four eight twos are three foot and all hand fired. Four eight four may have also been hand fired, I think, since since she was only meter gauge. I've restarted my game so I can have the American as my number one engine. Honestly, not a bad choice. I haven't restarted my game, but I will be restarting it soon, probably, maybe. Uh, I need to talk with some people about the idea and bounce it back and forth first. Will we ever come to Baker City for a visit and ride the Sumter Valley Railroad? Ah, uh, maybe. I think... I'm probably a little more interested in going out to see stuff like in Colorado. I know my father wants to do that. We want to ride behind like the Georgetown Loop or something like that. Hello, Wisconsin and Eastern. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Oh god, wait. The East Whittier Interchange received 24 cars, and is that capacity? Wait, I thought this thing could do up to 40. How did it only receive 24 cars today? What? <laughs> Something's borked, day. Eh? One lane is empty. Yeah, something's borked. I don't know why. I don't know why. It 
You're right, I should schedule another service. Uh, where do... Right, it's under locations. East Whittier Interchange. Okay. Features, mod settings, C1, C, D. Turn off continuous. Now. Maybe because of the coaches in the other lane. Maybe, but I don't think the co it, it was only one coach. And one hopper. It might be because we had a hopper on both sides of the interchange track. Maybe. It's the only thing I can really think of. Oh, well, it's fine. We'll, ju we'll just get another interchange service in a few hours in-game. We could test this theory out if you want, Mudge. I could reload the save, and we can move the, the hopper to the other track and see if that fixes it. <laughs> see if that works its magic. Not super miffed about it. Yeah, I'm not really miffed about it either. So, eh, let's let's just keep going. We'll be fine. War Thunder has had its in-game chat banned again. Oh my goodness. Because reasons of horrible occurrence in the motherland. Why am I not surprised? Don't make me ask an acquaintance to try adding a Ridgeway to the 2102. <laughs> that would be a beautiful experience, and it would piss so many people off. I approve. The, this, this idea is stir approved. It's so terrible. <laughs>
from a heist YouTube poop. Why does you put a Ridgway Sparp Rester on a Mason Bow? Don't correct misspellings. What is that? That one, um... God, I... I, I remember the thumbnail for that one heist YouTube poop. I just don't remember the title of it. Museum of Cock or something like that. I don't remember. Once put a Ridgeway on my HS scale 2. 10 2 was a joke and it was on for about a week. Should have kept it longer, SMH. My life is like a movie. Well, my life is like a YouTube poop swow. Swows, swows, swows. God, back in the day when I was in high school, we was we would just make YouTube poops up on the fly. <laughs> Swows. <laughs> uh, we have there's this one classic word that has stuck around for so long that it's become a nickname to me. Uh, one, one term we took from a YouTube poop many, many moons ago was, a uh, slouse. So if you ever see the one moderator on, on the Sturver 3.0, uh, call me slouse for any reason, you know why. Okay, maybe I went a little too fast around that curve. Um, <laughs> uh, I wasn't thinking straight. I was just running. I was thinking about slouse and swouse, and uh, now we are at uh, only 80%. Could be worse. YouTube poop strike again. The horror! My one fear in life. Wait, come on now. Hold on. Aren't you on the tracks? Why are you, why are you making the dust particles as if you're not on the tracks? Oh, that's strange. Stream name should be. How can I get my safety rating to negative two percent? Now we'll save that for next week. Don't worry, we'll save that for next week. Fifty-five 
If I had a locomotive of my own, like a full-sized one to three-foot gauge loco, I'd name it- I'm not reading that. Just to have the nameplate be as long as the boiler. <laughs> That's actually kind of genius. I'm stealing that. We're doing that in railroads online whenever we get a class 48 from here on out. That reminds me, back in high school, I knew a guy who got every answer wrong in a test and forgot his name. Teacher took off two points for no names, so he, he had a negative two on his test. Called him Milk for the rest of high school. <laughs> oh, that's a glorious nickname, though. If you get the lowest safety rating, it should just say RGS equivalent. <laughs> A Norfolk Southern moment. <laughs> dedicated to my rare the piss Imagine bringing home a negative two to your family. It's not even an F at that point. You just don't get a grade. <laughs> You've disgraced your family so much that you have to put up on your record that you got no grade whatsoever. <laughs> It would be a G minus. Or or do what CGP Grey did for his flag ranking video. Where every flag is um if it's really bad it just goes on the the F scale, where they ranked it separately from literally everything else, even though it was an F. So you could get Super F, or you could get F-A. <laughs> How to study for a prostate exam. <laughs> Simple. Just get a metal pole. Teacher inputs negative two into the grading system, and every building in the school board simultaneously blew up. If that was, if that was the case, I have a feeling a teacher wouldn't be the first person to stumble upon that. I feel like a student would abuse the system and try to see how to break it so all grades got lost.
you want to study for a prostate exam, you just gotta call up the homies and take off your socks. <laughs> oh, that's more cursed than the metal pole idea. I hope we can paint and decorate all locomotives and railroaders. I want to paint my steam locomotive Southern Railway green paint job they did for the PS4, 462, and diesels. Santa Fe freight bonnet paint job in green and yellow paint. There's one mod that actually apparently has the the 440 mod. There's one that adds a 440 with like 10,000 pounds of tractive effort. It's a pretty weak little engine. But like that thing is capable of being repainted and oh my god it looks so good. But could you imagine a Santa Fe 2102 here painted up with a green boiler? <laughs> Don't have painting yet? Keyword there. I think you mean keyword yet. <laughs> I, I hope you mean keyword yet. I sat an hour long thinking session when I realized something. 611 and the NNWJ class general were designed to be streamlined, but there weren't any non streamlined ones ever. I mean, yeah? I, I, I don't really know what to comment. <laughs> Purple boy. Now we gotta we gotta have the bright pink boiler. We have we have to have the garishly pink boiler that makes everybody's eyes hurt. Or yellow. Actually yellow would probably look better than pink. Not to say I don't like pink. Pink is a good color. I just I, I don't know, I don't think it would work for a train, honestly. <laughs> Neon orange boiler. Salmon pink. Salmon pink would actually probably work. But I'm thinking like neon pink. I'm thinking like flashy stuff that burn your eyes. Pink boiler makes it look like it's not textured. Now, if you want a not textured one, you gotta go with purple and black. You gotta get the checkerboard pattern. <laughs> Actually, that would be really funny. If it, if the boiler <laughs> could be retextured to be purple and black with a checkerboard pattern. So then Pacific Black Widow scheme on a steam loco. That'd be kind of interesting. How would that work? How would you get, like, the stripes on the end of the engine? Yellow is my favorite color, but however, there are some things that should not be yellow. <laughs> Gonna get tacos, be back. Alright, have fun food. Mud, well, see you in a little bit. Take care, take care. Deer antlers fitted at the front end light. <laughs> yes. We we need to have deer antlers fitted to this uh, center boiler front headlight. Actually, love it. where would be the most cursed position to put deer antlers on any steam locomotive? The tender water cap? The pistons? The cab, roof, smokestack, 
This is a philosophical question for the ages. Have an antler as the handle for the reverser. <laughs> if you just if you grab it wrong if you grab it wrong you just accidentally stab yourself <laughs> deer handlers on the dynamo one on each support beam on the pilot the whistle <laughs> yes I agree the whistle would be perfect Tender water hatch actually makes sense when you think about it. Could you use the antlers as a handle? Oh, you're right, you're right, to better open the hatch with. Give you a little extra leverage. That's kind of smart. Whistle would be carved from the deep. Wait, how the heck would you make a whistle? I mean, I guess you probably could, but that would be one heck of a we. Uh, wait, no. Why carve it out of deer antler? Make it so you build a whistle out of a, a deer's skull. That'll be so much creepier. <laughs> and the way you blow the whistle is you pull on the jawbone to make it drop open. <laughs> I play the session of Rare Order, I wonder why I do I sleep on this game so much? It's so fun. Uh, personally, I found that there's just so much to do after you reach a certain point, and that's why that's why we're playing on the smaller save today. That's why we're playing on the save that's only got Whittier to Alarka Junction. Uh, because that way we don't have to run all the way from Silva and suffer. But the other thing is just general burnout over time. Like, yeah, you can have a lot of fun with the game, but if you play it too much, you might get exhausted from playing it, you know? If you put deer antlers on the whistle, you gotta make it sound like a deer. Like how cuckoo clocks mimic a cuckoo, so that no deer will ever suspect a thing. God. Ooh, this big deer over here is pretty loud. I know, that's just Jerry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> He's a friend of the family. He's been around for like 90 years. <laughs> He's like two hours behind. watching this from the past. Got a time traveling machine. <laughs> watching the video in the past but posting in the present. Started a new save today and I'm having a blast. I know, right? It's, uh, there's something special about getting going. You know? Getting the show on the road. The whistle is just a deer collar. God, a train whistle, but you just replace it with a dog whistle, so that only dogs can know when trains are coming at railroad crossing. So everybody needs to own a dog if you're ever going to go across a railroad crossing, else you'll just die. <laughs> you'll, you'll just perish. You have to make your loco a steam dummy. <laughs> yeah, I'll make our loco a steam dummy Shay with a turbocharger. 
he's not family by blood, but he is family, and we love his splattering noises. Sound of a blender tearing apart someone's soul. Wait a minute, how the... No, 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 you are in the very much wrong track. I knew I had screwed something up on this side of Bryson. Uh... I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. First three hours of games are always my favorite. I end up rarely making it to the end game in anything because I enjoy restarting. I totally get that. I, I do that a lot in Minecraft. One hundred percent understand. Or now it needs to go to eat. Wait a minute. Why are these cars not low? Oh, oh, right. It's because we're out of tools at the mine, isn't it? Okay. Fine. I only have six engines, one more step to Alarka. Honestly, that's probably what I'm going to do for my next save. Make it so I'm only allowed to have six engines, they're only allowed to be a certain tract of effort, and uh, we're only allowed to go to Alarka. <laughs> make the logo make single noises. <laughs> you want your french fries? They're over here. Come and get them. I dare you. <laughs> Got thousands of hours in survival Minecraft, but only stuck to one save long enough. I've only ever made diamond armor like four times, dang. So got my S23 to do my logging runs, we'll see how that goes. S23 is a pretty decent option for logging runs. Personally, I kind of like the tank engine, just because it, it's the tank engine. <laughs> it's got logging in the name, what do you expect? I return with food, gonna eat then, and I'll be uh, back on train duty. No worries, man, take your time, take your time. I'm uh, I'm gonna get the 2102 ready to run. Then I'm just gonna set it up for AI engineer if that's okay, and then I might take over the job at Whittier for a little bit so that we can get everything sorted out. Cause we got a lot to sort out over there. I like using the G25 for my video shunting and logging runs. Honestly, not a bad idea. Not a bad use for it.
Sold my G25 and replaced it in passenger service with the middle 280. Personally, for passenger service, I like using the, uh, like, late game passenger service, I like using the Big Pacific. I feel like it's the best option, it just has such great water capacity and reasonably sized. <laughs> Reasonably powerful. I mean, it was almost able to pull the passenger train we had on that other save up Red Marble. If we if we had the lighter weight passenger cars, we totally could have done it. 100%. I think he was selling my number one for the American because new. Honestly, the American is a really fun engine to drive. It's really pretty. I like it. <laughs> Shiny little locomotive. the funniest wheel arrangement in your opinion um the only thing i can think of off the top of my head is the 2666 because it's got the number of the devil in there <laughs> it's all i can think of Why does the switch not want to switch? Why does the train not want to train? Not the 420? Oh no, the, the 420 isn't as funny as the 620. Come on now. If you want a really goofy engine, you gotta go for the 620. <laughs> Legally obligated. I love how the coach took a second to load in there. <laughs> or an eight four oh, that's a st what? <laughs> an eight four oh? Oh, goodness. About a 424. I don't know, for some reason the 424 seems normal to me. I don't know why. I guess I'm just used to it a bit. <laughs>
I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, you know what? I know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm doing, but I know what I want to. I want to watch the train run from the back. I want to sit out here on this little, uh, this little place and just watch as the rails ride behind us. Wish top speed of locomotives was written somewhere in the menus? Uh, there is no top speed for locomotives, Zane. Every engine in this game can go as fast as you can push them. The question is how much you the question is how fast you can go on certain portions of track. Got to bounce the baker is coming back and I think you just realized they should have been thrown out 2 weeks ago. <laughs> Look, just put a discount tag on you and he won't... <laughs> he'll fall for it. He won't realize. He'll think that you were just from two days ago. Also, it's midnight here and I'm sleepy. You know, that's fair. That's, that's probably pretty important. Sleep is good. I say, being very terrible with my sleep schedule. <laughs> got the P43 up at 462 up to 85 at one point. I think I've heard somebody got a really weak engine, like the T21. Uh, mm, excuse me. They got the T21 up to, like, 105 miles an hour, something like that. How are the new Locos? They're great. They're fun so far. Right now we're just riding a passenger train up to Hemingway. I can't believe I'm such a moron. <laughs> Where is it at? Where is the train? <laughs> why why did I send you down this random spur? Santa Fe looks like an absolute unit. Oh, don't worry, it totally is. Here, I can show you. We got one right here. Look at this chonky little thing. Look at her go. The T21 is a little broken as far as I- wait, really? T21 is broken? <laughs> wait. Wait a minute, why is the T-21 the stronger of these two engines? <laughs> I guess it, it does have a better factor of adhesion. Though it has a... a be and a better weight. Slightly, at least compared to the T-22. It can only hold 42,000 gallons of water, or 4,200, so I guess that's something. Managed to sprout puff pastry links, <laughs> and I'm now hiding behind a 6 kilo stack of flour. I think I'll rest here while he's still looking. See you all next week. Uh, take care, croissants. And don't get nommed. Don't get bored.
Ah, oh, this switch is set. Okay, okay. Just wondering. At least for speed, the T-21 is pretty broken. Saw someone get it up to 80 miles an hour in less than a mile when it took the P-43 like a mile and a half to get to 80, which makes no sense and is unrealistic. Were they using the basic controls, or were they using the complicated controls, though? Because, you know, there's the there's secondary control schematic, the simplified one. Because it's really easy to get locomotives up to really high speeds with the simplified schematic. Using manual controls, like first pressing controls, that's insane. How do I change between simple and complicated controls? Uh, in the lower left corner here, when you're in the third person control menu, click the little arrow next to your locomotive, um, I, I want to say name, but it's, it's your reporting mark. Click on that arrow that's pointing down and then select simplified. It'll give you an alternate menu that is extremely easy to control your engine with. It only has forwards and backwards as options. Um, for direction, you you don't have to deal with uh, messing around with where the reverser is positioned, and it has either either you are applying force or you are applying brake. <clears throat> the the slider applies only more regulator and or more brake, and but the simplified controls will automatically adjust the regulator, or not the regulator, the reverser for you so that you save steam and and keep going faster and faster and whatnot. I've been able to get a, um, a Berkshire up to like 60 miles an hour in East Whittier Yard using this. <laughs> That's something I feel a lot of people don't know about, so, uh, well, you know, I've been saying that I should do a tutorial series for the game. Maybe this is my opportunity. Aha! See, our train may be slow, but we made it to Hemingway on time. That's a terrible screenshot, I love it. <laughs> Not a bad plan, certainly. Yeah, especially, especially because it gives me an excuse to actually do a total save reset. Which could be pretty fun. Stir's Sturting Guide to Railroad Stir, but um, Tish. Well, 
logging tank is so precious. It's such a cute little engine, and now that we actually have better fuel consumption, it's like actually a decent choice. It's still not the best engine in the game due to its terrible water capacity, but like, it's no longer barely bearable. It's, okay, I can do this. <laughs> Newsflash, after 13 years, there's a new duck song. Walked up to the lemonade stand, and he said to the sands, run in the stand. Hey! <laughs> Wait! Wait! Oh god, the, that reminds me of something terrible. Something very cursed. Another YouTube poop that I'm going to have to send after stream. That may or may not be a... May or may not be age-restricted. <laughs> it's good to hear, at least. I was gonna skip it for the full Mikado. Honestly, the full Mikado is better. Like, it's just got better tractive effort. And if you're somebody who prefers tender engines, I mean, obviously it's better in that regard. It's a little more expensive, admittedly, but, like, you get more than... T you almost get three times as much water capacity out of the deal. Factor of, uh, factor of adhesion is slightly worse, weight is slightly worse, but like, eh, it's a decent engine. It is a reasonable choice. Do you like my tank engine? Not gonna lie, it's the water capacity that's really selling it. Yeah. I think the tank engine is best used on on like the logging branch for Connolly or for Walker or as like a switcher in Bryson where you're easily able to get to multiple water tanks quickly. But it also now that it's got better water capacity just inherently because they changed the way the game worked. Like at this point I would have run through like a hundred 100 gallons of water, and I've only ran through 20. You could probably use it on the route from Whittier to Bryson pretty well. Just got back from my bike ride. I was not expecting to be hailed on it midway through, but I did. Plan was to have it as a dedicated Connolly engine, so it's, yeah, if, if you want to have it as a dedicated Connolly engine, this is a perfect option for the route. It's a little stronger than you'll probably need, but, like, it's an excellent little tank engine for switching out the yard, especially because it has a very small footprint, meaning that you might be able to sneak in an extra car on the switchback for the Y. And for running logs up to Connolly, it, it's got good strength. It can handle the hill quite well. It's what we use it for. It looks strange, so still a great pick for anything. <laughs> it does look strange, admittedly, but that adds to its charm. Thomas got a glow up after going to the gym. Just do this the easy way. Logging tank may, may be a nice bank for red marble, since you can just put a shit up to top tin and coast down to base with this coal and water literally right there. It might be, but the only problem is that it's on. It's just it's it's not very much power. <laughs> so that is the one eternal struggle. It's not strong enough.
It's not much, but it's cheap. I guess it is cheap. It is what? Only... 12,500? <laughs> Once you've made it to Red Marble, if you can't money, uh, that, that sounds like... That sounds like a you problem. <laughs> Glad to hear the consumption's being reworked, though. I was always a little terrified of how much water my decapods went through. I know, right? It's nice to know that we, we don't have to worry about running out of water as much as we used to. It did add a fun challenge, but I, I like being able to just operate trains, you know? I'm here to run the trains, not to refuel them constantly. It's a welcome change. if they'll ever implement AI refueling, at least at water towers along the route. That could be pretty cool. Could be pretty nifty. And <laughs> pretty useful, considering how fast I used to run out of water on my uh, Dekas and my Burks. Oh, I also kind of like that you, you can't really just abuse the AI and have it do everything for you. You still have to do some level of maintenance for it. If the AI could do everything, there wouldn't be much of a game left, optimizing the fun out of it. I mean, there could be a game out of it. I know that some games can manage optimization well. I just feel like Rare Order is one of those games where it'd probably get a little bit dull over time. <laughs> Hired the local AI to do my taxes! All I could think of is the, um, I, I saw that one video, Sonic, Sonic does tax evasion, Sonic commits tax evasion. <laughs> All I can think of the ending, it is the ending, <laughs> where Sonic just says, you die tonight, <laughs> in the most deadpan voice possible. I don't know why that's what my brain is running towards right now, but it is. All right, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to pull these Robinson Gap cars out onto the one track that is not used by the interchange, and then I think I'm gonna use engine number 100 over here to uh, to switch out. Actually, hold on, yard. And I'm gonna use it to switch out all the Whittier cars, but Foist, Foist, I need to focus on the passenger train. Orders reverse.
Yeah, Tony, who, how did you get a steam locomotive to do your taxes, Tony? Doesn't, doesn't even have, have hands. I, I thought we were supposed to be evading those anyways. I just, I don't know, Tony, I, I don't, I don't get it. Why, why'd you do such a thing? <laughs> Have you served Hewitt slash Nantahala already? Nope. Uh, I'm probably not going to be heading out that way anytime soon, because this save doesn't have either Hewitt or Nantahala. I set up a shuttle service with a new 440 and three open-end platform coaches to shuttle between Alarca and Alarca Junction, so my main passenger train doesn't need to go up that route. Saves so much time. Actually, that's something I kind of want to experiment with. How many passenger cars can the 440 fit on the Y all the way at Alarca? And of what types would they need to be? Could be kind of a fun little challenge to do after stream. Honestly, Whittier to Alarca is all you need in this game. Anything more is really for people who wanted to dedicate hours to ops. Yes! I 100% agree. Even for the people who want to dedicate to uh, hours to ops, you kind of need a lot of ops to make it work. <laughs> Did like the game that the game made me look up what schist is though. I don't actually know what schist is. It. You want um <laughs> You want to share? Got any info for us, buddy? can try that right now. That would be very much appreciated. I prefer the, the passenger cars that can store 84 people, because um, obviously you want to be able to fit the most amount of cars in that space, or the most amount of passengers in that space. The Y in Alarca is small. Oh, I know, I know. But hey, if I can squeeze every ounce out of that little Y, I will. <laughs> So glad I have a loop at Alarca on my safe. Didn't they have a loop at Alarca originally when I got the game? Like when I first started playing it? Um. Back in December? At Alarca or Alarca Junction? I'm thinking Alarca here, not Alarca Junction. At Alarca Junction, I know the approximate. It's, it's gonna be about three cars. It's Alarca that I'm concerned about. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars. Roger that. Eight for the sawmill. I think we'll start by delivering the cars to Stenzel. So we can get that out of the way ASAP. And then we'll uh we'll worry about Whittier. Sawmill? Afterwards, it's 
It's a medium-grained metamorphic rock, easy to split into plates in a manner akin to slate. It has a very high mica content, I don't know what mica is either, and is normally a derivative of mudstone. It apparently has high schistosity, <laughs> referring to having multiple thin layers enabling it to be split into multiple into plates more effectively. <laughs> Schistosity. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to start saying that to people. They're, they're gonna stare at me weird. Just gonna stare at me funny. I like this plan. It's a terrible plan. <laughs> Add another word to my vernacular. rocks all the way down and stone brother rock and stone in the heart <laughs> secretly Tony is just a dwarf a dwarf miner on a moon a million miles away from here Why can fit the 440 and exactly two Osgood Bradleys? Nothing more, I assume. Ugh. Man, okay, we'll probably just have to make the passenger train a little bit longer and take the L. If anything. Which I guess really isn't that bad to reverse the passenger train, it's just annoying. <laughs> Am I seriously the only one who's liked today's stream, or is my YouTube bugged? I'm pretty certain it's bugged. Yeah, we're sitting at 19 likes, don't worry much. <laughs> but thank you for the call-out post. I can now I can now berate everybody who hasn't liked the stream yet. Now we're at 20! Look at that! <laughs> like magic. <laughs> Consider this, just leave the passenger train to the station, use the Y to grab the observation car, Turn them around like that, rebuild your train and depart. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the alternative. It's the uh, the slightly annoying alternative, but the, the still effective and really not all that bad alternative. I thought about using a second engine, pull into a Larka. Run round single engine, meanwhile couple the other engine up into park to a Larka junction. Oh, that's kind of clever. Like, you have it so that one engine sw <clears throat> Excuse me, you swap out what engine's doing what to make the turnaround time fast. 
So you say you have like two four four O's, or just just for example, I don't think it would be two four four O's. It'd probably be something different. You have two four four O's. One of them brings in a freight early, turns itself around, starts doing some shunting, and then as the passenger train comes into town, you use the first engine that got there to pull the passenger train out immediately. While the second engine that came in with the passenger train uses the Y to turn around and continue doing the switching, that'd be kind of clever. Hello, Wes. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. We're gonna, I think we're still going to have one car. Let's see here. Yeah, we're, st we're still... There's only enough room for three cars here, so we're still gonna have one car that's not gonna be loading, unfortunately. But we can still get them loading as soon as possible, so hopefully these cars will, will get out of the way sooner rather than later. I forgot about this train. Um, I won't lie. <laughs> let me let me go ahead and uh, make sure that's set for the correct yard track, real quick. <laughs> Oh wait, Mudge put down that flare, not me. Oops. <laughs> eh, whatever, it's fine, it's fine, we got it all sorted out. Feeling a little spoiled with all these train game updates, routes in line is getting something tomorrow. Oh yeah, so it is, so it is. Though I've heard that the knuckle couplers are honestly a bit hastily included. Alright, let's pull these suckers out of the place. And I think you guys are right, try to spot all the cars. It would be easier, and I know that one of these, um... This car right here was not spotted yet. So what we can do... I think what we can do is split it up so that this car... The one that was already parked there, but was still loading, we'll just we'll just keep that out of the track and load it later. <laughs> Can we get some rain for the ambiance? Eh. Maybe another day. Maybe another time. Sunshine is nice. Sunshine is very nice, especially as somebody who lives in Oregon, in Portland, where rain is our only type of weather. You get nothing other than rain. It's true. Look out the window right now. Can't you guys hear the rain coming through on my microphone? <laughs> we can change the weather. Yeah, there's a way to change the weather, uh, Takum. It's a command. You type in slash weather... And then it gives you it gives you a list of the weather types you can do. Uh, I guess we'll just run through them quickly. Cloudy one, and we'll we'll look at the sky so that you can see the difference. Ooh. 
There's actual raindrops around. And I think that's all there is. Yeah, that's all there is. Fog feels a little less foggy than it used to, to be frank. But bam. <laughs> there you go, now you know how to take pretty screenshots. <laughs> as a fellow Oregonian, I can confirm we're not the rain state. Oh no, not Oregon as a whole, just Portland. <laughs> the east side can be like the high desert at times, especially in the summer. Yeah, western and eastern Oregon have wildly different climates. It's kind of impressive, but at the same time, it's just it's just nature. Sunshine in Oregon is fantastic. I live in Haines, New Oregon, near the mountains. It's absolutely a great view and good weather. Admittedly, we have been getting a lot of sunshine here in Portland recently. It's been pretty nice. Although, uh, considering my terrible sleep schedule, every time I see the sunlight, I'm like a vampire and I just get extremely flippin' tired. <laughs> and I can't do anything. <laughs> it looks cool, but my brain just tells me, Go to sleep, you goober. Good lord, I may just shy of 10,000 from passengers alone on my save in one day. Yeah, passenger service is, a uh, kinda good. Hold on, actually, let me see. Our railroad made how much off passenger? Only 1,000. Still, though, that's pretty dang good. <laughs> Rolling and bank. Alright, hold on. Where is train number one at? Oh, it's in Hemingway. That explains why it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Make like 5 to 8k a day off my save off passengers. Yeah, we used to do that with the, um, uh, on the old save. Hate that only the two bay hoppers have collisions for their loads. It's such BS. What, you want to sink into the coal and become a coal gremlin? A coal gnome? Ah. 
I was going to do a little more complicated of a maneuver here. I just realized that I didn't do that. Oops. <laughs> I do not want to become a comb. <laughs> why, why does that spelling feel so cursed? Why does that feel terrible? I do <laughs> Something about that feels viscerally incorrect. What if they'll do oil firing locomotives at some point down the line? I doubt it, because like the way the game handles coal firing, oil firing probably wouldn't be any wrong or any any different. Um, wrong, wrong. I was thinking about the comb thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like the um. I feel like coal firing is would just be basically the same thing as oil firing, just you'd get your, your oil from a different location. East Coast also never really got big on oil fire. That too... I'm sure some people would still want to see them though, because fun and different. <laughs> My bad. Coamo... Co... Coaumn... There we go. That's a, that's a much better term. Oh, man of the coal, what is your wisdom? It is better to have less coal in your firebox than more as long as you don't let the fire go out. I don't know, why does that sound like a quote from a children's book? A coal blin? <laughs> terrible, terrible, I love it. Looking at the bid history of this thing I'm looking at, I see a guy who was trying to adjust his max bid and ended up building against himself about 11 times? <laughs> wow. That's impressive. That takes a certain level of skill. You all suffer from coliosis. However, in the game developers behind Rarator on the Steam Discussions page for Rarator that at some point they are going to have a go at oil-fired steam locomotives. Okay. I assume that'll be something later on down the line. And I'll probably spend a little more time focusing on improving what we've already got first. Man, with how short the railroad is, we might actually get all of our, all of the jobs we really desperately need to 
done in time before the first interchange service. That's kind of cool. Got her, just got her first new loco, so I'm sure it'll take a bit. Yeah, exactly. It'll take a while. That's yeah, doing fine. We'll probably refuel it once it gets to Whittier. All good things come in time. I'm loving the new graphic stuff. Yes, yes, exactly. And also the bug fixes. It's nice that this game is, is relatively very, very stable. <laughs> relatively very, very stable. I know how to words. <laughs> Having the best frames I've had ever. Exactly. Admittedly, I'm using the. I'm still using an RTX 4070, so I I, I can't comment much. But Got the AMD equivalent of a 1080 Ti peasant. <laughs> I heard the 1080 Ti actually isn't too bad. I've also heard that AMD graphics cards aren't too bad, but I was considering getting one originally, but then I got like a huge amount of money and I decided to get the 4070. <laughs> Served a lark, a lark of copper at 513. The total of six cars split between the two sections of the mine took until 2 o'clock the next morning to be filled. <laughs> Welcome to the copper mines, where they don't load as fast as the coal for whatever reason. Honestly, I kind of like it that way because it means that you it sort of splits up the jobs into two different days. Where you lo start loading them one day, and then you, um, you bring them back to the interchange the next. I don't know why I read that most recent comment in Tony's voice. A lot of cop Not Tony, sorry, the mobster. <laughs> A lot of cop We'll supply you. Eventually.
Quick guide to Super Mario Odyssey. You take the moon, and 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 you take the moon. Will that be like... Is that theft? Does it count as theft that Mario keeps just taking these moons off of random places? Have you ever heard of the Great Molasses Flood? Of course, who hasn't? <laughs> the one that I love he hearing about often is the Great Whiskey... Uh, wasn't there like a whiskey flood that also set caught on fire, but people kept coming back to the whiskey because they wanted it? But they kept catching on fire, so they kept dying... <laughs> It's one of my favorite old weird disaster stories. <laughs> it's not stealing if you say you're with the British Museum! <laughs> Who hasn't heard of the Great Molasses Flood? Me. That 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 would be me. I ain't never heard of one. Yeah, there was a molasses flood where the base. I I don't remember all the details of it because you know I, I only have so much memory to my mind. I only have two gigabytes of storage space in my memory. <laughs> but there was a big flood where a um. A, a molasses plant like had a big burst and it went roaming through like the city of Boston I want to say I don't remember somebody correct me on that <laughs> look the only reason the pyramids are still there was because the museum couldn't figure out how to move them <laughs> At least at Robinson Gap Coal, the mine, the miners aren't dealing with mining coal at a 45 degree angle like a lark of copper miners have to deal with. Uh, I'd go check, but I don't, I don't have the tracks. What do you? I'm a little confused by that statement. All right, we're going to get the 210 to out around the Y. Turn her around, get her facing forwards. She'll obviously have to wait for the, uh, the switcher to get out of her hair, but... Oh boy, howdy, what a marvelous warm summer day in Boston. This wonderful January day of 1915 couldn't get any sweeter. Say, do I smell something sweet? I don't know why, but that sounds like a really bad pickup line you'd, you'd use on somebody at a bar. And then you just start sniffing them creepily. <laughs> and then you get kicked out. I don't know why that's what my brain went to here, but it is. <laughs> the mental image of that, you're welcome! <laughs> the mental image you totally didn't need. Well, it is sticky and good. Nope, nope, not gonna say that. Nope, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> 
See, ore bodies are often at 45 degree angles or something? That's interesting. If it's got the consistency of molasses, please go see a doctor. <laughs> Thing is, that would probably work on, like, one person. Oh, it totally would. You'd probably find somebody at the bar who would absolutely be smitten with you. Kind of like how Baby, um... Are you a bear trap? Because I want to get crushed between your thighs would get somebody at a... At, at some place. Why did I smack my lips in the middle of saying that? <laughs> Why did I smack my lips? <laughs> if it's brown, go see a doctor. That's the wrong hole. Either that, or it's leaking, and that's a problem. <laughs> Joke's on you. Mine's red! Ayo, hey, you got the Kool-Aid? <laughs> the Kool-Aid DLC? Red ain't the coolest. I got the full RGB package. So now that we have the safety mechanic and rating mechanic of this game is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Look at me. I'm at 94%. It doesn't matter, though. Ha, ha, ha. Because I'm still above 100%. How are you at 90? I'm at 85, but I've never derailed once. I think it's... I think it's probably... Well, it depends. I don't know. Deliver cars at like 97% health occasionally? There's the problem. <laughs> Apparently, railroads do not like it when their cars are less than 100% health. And so like 99% you're probably okay. 98 
is where it starts to get sketchy. 97 is where you have a problem. If you don't repair it, the railroads get a little pissy with you. And if you're if you're getting a bunch of small bouts of damage of like 97% on your um on your cars compared to like 80% on your locomotive. With your locomotive, it's your own engine. It doesn't really matter as much to the rail. Like, yeah, the people will still be upset with the damage, but it doesn't quite matter as much as the 1% damage on a freight car that you don't own. So, hey, welcome back, Nina. Welcome back. <laughs> a little close to the end of the stream, but I'll probably leave the session running for a little longer. I do want to. I do want to have a bit of a discussion about the idea that Mudge is mentioned in in the yard chat. Hello, Jack. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we the new engines are pretty fun so far. Uh, we got all three of them on this save. Right now, it's really funny though because I've been running basically. I've been running the other locomotives for the most part. <laughs> we got the 4-4 over here, though. It's a nice little locomotive. It's been a reliable little freight engine for the day, though I'm thinking we might eventually make it into a passenger engine on another save. It's a cute little locomotive. Uh, the 210 2 is pretty nearby. That's been a great heavy-duty haul engine. And the 4-6-0 is in Bryson. I can go show that off in a minute. <laughs> Guess I managed to catch the tail end of the stream. That you did. That you did. Though my addiction might run run wild, we might have a, another stream sometime this week. Maybe, though, I'll do it on Twitch. I don't know. <laughs> Use Twitch for something other than Splatoon. Two ten two has been drowned. Yep, uh, I, uh, I kind of damaged it while I was moving it to uh, <laughs> to Robinson Gap. <laughs> if you want to keep turning it around, though, go right ahead. I'm kind of just switching over here in Whittier. The caboose also got browned. Do you prefer Twitch or YouTube for streaming, or is it much of a muchness? Uh, I mostly use YouTube, but that's just because it's what I have used for the longest time. I've been slowly experimenting with Twitch. Want it to run the engine light back to Bryson? Oh, no, no, I just want it turned around because we were going to be getting an inter interchange service in about 20 minutes. And we'll probably be getting more Robinson's Gap cars. Uh, we already have a couple of Robinson's Gap cars already waiting in, uh, in East Whittier. <clears throat> so we'll just turn it around, wait for it to, um, wait for that to happen, and bada bing, bada boom. Intrusive thoughts have been getting give, have just given me an excellent idea. Splatoon Raiders. <laughs> but um Tish. This sounds like a webcomic that gets shut down by Nintendo after like the 127th page. They get a cease and desist. Been doing some work on my model railroad, the fictional Jefferson Hill Railroad. We have the foam boards in, and we are ready to ballast the tracks. We've been doing some work on the Owen 30 layout, and we've actually been... Uh, this just reminds me, uh, it's kind of a bit of a tangent. Uh, why the heck did I bring this car all the way up here? It needs to be down in there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we've actually been doing a little bit of work on the Owen 30 project last night. Uh, I got to do some hammering. My arm is still sore. But we got to do some hammering. We got the uh, the base for one of the three segments nailed down. That's cool, though. 
What kind of ballast are you going to be using? What color? What size? <laughs> Emotional support boxcar. It's here for the ride. <laughs> Why do you think they call them the high cubes? Because Minecraft, come on now, it's obvious. Bonk. And bonk. Woodland Scenic's fine ballast gray blend. Are you going to be doing that thing that some modelers do where they actually use a different color of ballast on like their sidings or whatever? Or is it just going to be one color for the whole layout? Ayo, $300. Did I see a passenger train making me have fat cash? <laughs> I've been thinking about and planning on the layout in a desk build. The current plan is to do a 6x3 in an, but in an L shape. Short leg of the L would be 5 inches, so an industry or yard could be spotted there? Could be an interesting way of um, handling things. I'm trying to think though, five inches seems a little bit small for an L shape. It's more like a, a rectangular layout with an extension than an actual L, you know? I don't know why, but I just thought of a really old YouTube poop called Scooby-Doo and Mystery Inc. Wreck a Luxury Passenger Train, and I need to find it again at some point. Yes. Do it. Five feet, not inches. Wait, the short leg of the L would be five feet? <laughs> Wouldn't that make it the longer leg? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm confused. Because if it's only going to be a three by six foot layout in an L shape... Wouldn't that mean that the other leg of the L is three feet?
Also went to the Southern Museum of Civil War and Locomotive History. And hey, so the general there. That's sweet. That's fun. Good old legendary classic engine. <laughs> Flashbacks to that one Disney movie where the people all get hung at the end. How uh, do you like working this with the Santa Fe before it derailed? Uh, derailed pretty early on, actually. <laughs> and soon after it derailed, I changed to AI service because I went to uh, run the passenger train at the same time. But it was a fun little engine to run for the short amount of time I was handling it. Smooth, strong, snappy... <laughs> body of the desk would be 6x3 and the section that juts off would be 2x3 wait wouldn't that just be a 6 foot long segment though not 5 oh unless you're doing like a, a si uh, wait Unless you're making it so it's three feet... It's half the length of the six-foot segment, but it sticks out two feet? It's gonna be a pretty big desk. Hey, the luggage car, how'd you get that in the regular game mode? Uh, cheats! Hold on. If you go into here... One thing you can do that it doesn't mention is you can do slash mode, and then you can do sandbox, or you can do company. And we actually had to deal with this earlier on in the stream, because I had set it to sandbox to cheat in the new locomotives. And to replace, we, we replaced engines that were already there, we didn't just blatantly cheat and get the engines with nothing, that's boring. <laughs> but uh, what you do is... You just go into the locomotive spawn menu, and you spawn in the baggage car. <laughs> and then you set it back to company mode, like nothing ever happened. You can also cheat out the money if you want to be very, um, nitpicky about it. And there's also a second passenger car not available. There's the work car, which can only hold ten passengers, but it, it looks cool for maintenance away. <laughs> Should really plan out how to make my end scale layout. Hey, if you want some plans, I've got a million end scale plans. I used to do N before we did the ON30 layout. <laughs> I've got so I recently built one in 4x6 in an L shape on two 2x4 two foot um, plots. It's a figure eight, and it's designed for a modern era short line railroad. We just wish the baggage cars had a use. It would be kind of cool if they gave like a small multiplier, kind of like how the um, the observation does, but like it's a smaller multiplier than the observation overall. Or maybe it's a bigger one, but it would have to be only one per train. It would still have to be, it would have to be like oh the the baggage car is behind the locomotive or something. I know that wouldn't necessarily allow for the most creatively realistic stuff, but... Have you watched Alex the Historian's Owen 30 layout project? I've seen it occasionally on my recommended. I haven't really fully watched it yet, though. I've just seen, like, one video. <laughs> Going back to the Jefferson Hill, the lore is that it's the short line that takes pride in steam preservation. The line runs off an old branch of the Nickel Plate Road. Modern era short line railroad that runs only steam locomotives.
going to be full in half a second, so we can close this up, set it to road mode, set it to 20 miles an hour, and send the passenger train on its way. eBay bids in five minutes. eBay bid ends in five minutes, so I'll tune back in when, once I'm done with that. Good luck, TK. Quick, everybody end the stream. <laughs> everybody, hide. <laughs> Actually, this would be a pretty decent time to end the stream, funnily enough. Like, do the usual thing where we just continue playing off camera for a little bit. Definitely useful to have friends run some of the other engines. I've mostly played solo, but doing stuff with others is always fun. Yes! <laughs> doing stuff with friends, and or even just with acquaintances, is, is an absolute blast. Just hanging out with other people. Dude, recently I played uh, Super Mario Wonder, and I, um... <laughs> I kept getting random strangers who were higher level than me come up and just help me play the game, and we just... I don't know, there's something so charming about that innocence and, and joy of helping other people <laughs> on the internet. But here it's also fun because you kind of get this sense of formality. And you also have to work together because you have to actually meet at certain points. Like, today we had um, Nina working the... Robinson Gap, or backing up the Santa Fe into the Robinson Gap cars, and, like, I had to tell him, nah, wait for a second, let me, let me pull through with a switcher or whatever. Like, that's a very simple example. We've had plenty of interactions like this, this stream. Also, I kind of like the passenger train, and how it's AI run, because it sort of just adds this extra layer of, oh, shiz, look out, guys, we gotta remember to, to keep up with everything on the main line. <laughs> I don't know, it's fun, it's cool. Also, what the heck, employee timetable? Why is this called a timetable? <laughs> so you're playing Dodge the Passenger Train? Exactly, kind of like with the, um... With kind of like with Lionel Train 3D Ultra Train Town Deluxe. <laughs> I have a new seat at the front of the- I just saw that budge. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> okay, maybe I won't steal it, but... <laughs> Part of me just had a thought it hit the back of my head. I'm going to use this thumbnail for my next stream. Uh, <laughs> I think this is a good place to end, though. Uh, I'll, I'll keep the, the world running for a little bit. Mudge and Nina. Also, I'll be talking a little bit about my plans for what, what Mudge mentioned in the art chat. So, keep your eyes peeled for that. Thank you all for joining me on this fine Sunday morning. Hope you all had as much fun as I did. I don't know, I actually feel like I had a little more fun this stream than I have for the last couple of ones. Uh, I guess just the smaller scope was a little more entertaining and felt a little more grounded. I don't know, it was fun, it was good. But I will see you all uh, sometime in the future. Maybe Friday, maybe before then, if I decide to stream on Twitch. Uh, maybe after that, who knows? <laughs> Take care, everybody. I'll see you around. Cheers, folks.